back. Now, earlier on, we met Ireland's first period coach, Lisa de Jong, and she's back now to take on your questions. So the first question is, how can you introduce your daughters to dealing with periods and what lifestyle changes can improve our experience with that tough time of the month? Well, Lisa is here to tell us. And that's a really good one because, you know, it's a big talk, isn't it? The whole sex education is a tough one for parents to know when is the right time, when's not the right time. And then if it's a girl, there's a whole added topic that should be discussed. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very confusing time. And um, the what happens um, with, a, with a girl's first period can leave a mark um, on her kind of, you know, her, her memory and her experience of what happened and what wasn't acknowledged or what was said. And um, so it is very important for it to be acknowledged in some way. So what I would say in this, in this case is to, to give her the facts, educate her on what's happening with her body um, as much as she can understand and then, and at what age would you think? Um, I think, I suppose prepubescent. So it depends on. I think girls nowadays, you know, they're developing earlier than they used to. Mm. Um, so in this case, she's eleven. That's a good age. Definitely a good age. Even earlier, um, nine or ten. I know that they get education in school as well around that time. Um, but definitely, I think it's very important to acknowledge um, the confusion that she might have and acknowledge her emotion and. If she wants to mark it in some way, like I know some women who um, might receive a gift or they might have a ceremony or something small, just depends on what the girl wants. It's really about her choice and what feels right for her. And I keep talking about sitting the girl down, but if you have a boy in your house, should you be telling them about it too? I, I would say so. Yeah. I mean, if, if that's the kind of household you have where things are openly discussed, I think it's no harm to to be open and honest about these things because it's going to affect men too, you know, down the line. A friend of mine said something interesting to me. She has three daughters and, you know, as a parent, you very rarely get to be in the bathroom on your own. Mm. So quite often from a very young age, they might see you changing a sanitary product. And she was just quite open. I mean, obviously she didn't go into graphic detail, Mm. but she sort of said, if no baby comes, this this can arrive. And kids won't bat an eyelid at that age. Mm. You explain something to them, that's the end of it. Mm. And that can normalise it really early so by the time you get to 10 or 11 it's not this big shock yeah absolutely I think that's a nice way to do it to kind of make it normal from you know from an early age because it is it can be a big shock if suddenly you know you're just going along in your innocent childhood and then suddenly your body changes and you have to use sanitary towels and you can't go swimming and it all happens very quickly so definitely I think the earlier the better Okay, good stuff. Um, now, second question. My periods are really irregular. Should I be worried? Um, this lady is 30 years of age and says she's never been on a 28-day cycle. But in the last two years, it's been getting worse. Yeah, this is very common. Um, it's very, very common uh, for a menstrual cycle to not be perfectly regular. Um, so what is probably happening here, ovulation happens and then it's usually the time between ovulation and menstruation is always more or less the same. So what that means is, is that ovulation is actually being delayed, which then means that the period is then delayed or early. Um, so in this case, I would definitely go to the doctor and get all the hormones checked and everything. And then, um, look at why, why is there a hormonal imbalance? It could be stress related. It could be diet related, it could be um, stress in your lifestyle. It could be very strenuous exercise can also um, have an impact on ov- ovulation too. So there are very, various factors at play here. But I would definitely say um, get checked by the doctor. Start tracking your menstrual cycle. Pay attention to how you feel every day um, in relation to what day you're on. And then see if there's any areas in your life that you can reduce stress, not only like in, in work or whatever, but also in your diet. Like if you're eating a lot of sugar, that's also going to cause stress in your body. Yeah, so t- take that journal we spoke about a little bit earlier and see if you can get any kind of, of pattern, but definitely go and get your hormones checked. Yeah. Um, next question is, uh, my daughter's 16 and going into the leaving search. She suffers terribly with menstrual cramps as well as vomiting on the first day of her cycle. How can she ease these symptoms? Yeah, that's I can really relate to this one. Um, very, very difficult experience, especially when you're going through such a stressful time in your life with the leaving search. Um, so what I would say here is ibuprofen, like a neurofen, you can actually take that um, day or two before your period and even just when you start to feel you're getting your period because what's happening is um, when the, the uterus starts to contract, the body releases hormones called prostaglandins, which are similar to hormones that get released when we're giving birth. And if there's too many prostaglandins, then we can get... Um, you know, this very uh, high blood pressure and we might start to feel dizzy and vomiting can happen. And so taking ibuprofen 
at the onset of, of a period or the day before even can reduce the prostaglandin. So that's one thing you can do. And then the next is becoming aware of the cycle. Um, so get used to when your cycle is happening and prepare in advance, take loads and loads of rest. Um, an anti-inflammatory diet as well. So reducing, she's 16, okay, so she doesn't, hopefully doesn't need to worry about alcohol, but reducing alcohol, uh, reducing sugar, um, improving your sleep and loads of fruit and veg. The more colour in your diet, the better, especially in the premenstrual time. Because a lot of the time around then, we just want to take to the duvet and bring a tub of ice cream with us or chocolate is another big thing that does lift our mood, but it actually yeah. might aggravate it a little bit further. So maybe a smoothie, maybe a soup, that kind of thing, try and get the veg in. Yeah, yeah. Warm foods are really good around that time. Warming, calming foods. Don't let yourself go hungry either because then you don't crave those sugary things. Um, and it's okay to have a bit of chocolate and ice cream now and then, but just be careful not to overdo it. For me, anyway, if I eat ice cream, my cramps actually get worse. Okay, mm. and again, it's worth tracking through the journal and just seeing, yeah. and then you can eliminate it, and it, you don't have to live yeah, this way. it's not worth it. <laughs> uh, should I track my periods with the contraceptive implant in? I have the bar in my arm, and my cycle can be hit and miss. Is it still worth trying to track it, as it may give various results? That's from Nikki. Yeah, that's a really good question. So with any kind of hormonal contraceptives, um, uh, what's happening is very different to when we don't have hormonal contraceptives. So our hormonal cycle is, is kind of more steady. We don't have that kind of cyclical rhythm. Um, but there will be mood changes and things that are happening as well because, you know, we're not robots, we are humans. So it, I would advise a woman who's on any kind of hormonal contraceptive to track her menstrual cycle because what can often happen is the um, hormones that are being released by the hormonal contraceptive, like the pill, for example, can um, affect her mood even more so. And then once she has that information, she could bring that to the doctor and look at an alternative option. But many would feel you're sort of messing with nature by altering your hormones. But can it be symptom free? The Using a hormonal contraceptive? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, there's, um, there's a pill called the mini pill, which I think is progesterone only which means that we are still ovulating because the progesterone and estrogen pill will suppress ovulation. Whereas the, um, the mini pill, it's kind of like, it just prevents um, implantation. So there's a few different options and it just really depends on the woman. Like for me, it didn't work and I didn't want to go there, but some women are perfectly happy on hormonal contraceptives. Yeah, and it might be worth just trialing and that journal, of exactly, course, yeah. will help you and you'll find out what suits you and what doesn't. Yeah. Uh, somebody else wondering about tracking their period. Um, 35 and myself and my partner are trying for our first baby. I want to make sure I have all the information in front of me when visiting doctors, etc., to maximise our chances of conceiving sooner rather than later. Are period trackers something you would recommend or is there anything else I should consider? Yeah, that's a really good question. Definitely, I would recommend track the menstrual cycle because then you're starting to understand when your body is ovulating. There's also some great apps and technology that are specifically designed for conceiving. Um, one is called a company called Natural Cycles and women usually use it for contraception, but it also helps in determining when you're ovulating. And another one is called the Lady Comp um, and that will give you a very clear indication of when you're ovulating. Um, and then to give you the best chance of conceiving is to have a healthy menstrual cycle. So again, um, stress levels down, healthy diet, um, good sleep and avoid too much strenuous exercise. Yeah, and it can be so hard when you're trying to get pregnant and then sometimes you're not getting the results you want yeah. to turn off that head. But yeah, working on some of the other things you were saying, like mindfulness and meditation and being kind to yourself yeah. can help there as well. Now, you have an event coming up. We couldn't get to all of the questions we got. Mm -hmm. So where can people find you and tell us a bit about your event? Yeah, so my website is yourcyclematters.com and my event is a seminar on the 22nd of September in the um, Hilton Hotel in Dublin in Charlemont. Okay, good yeah. stuff. Well, thank you very, very much for coming in. Thanks, Claire. Now, if you're concerned about any of your reproductive health or have any health concerns, do always seek medical advice from a trained professional. But coming up next, we're going to be getting ready for autumn winter with some great 